All right, part one, general. And as we finish a part, guys, I'd like us to do a summary. And Brian, if you can remind us, we'll do a summary and let's correct any mistakes we made or give final comments. And before we go to the next part, so help me in case I forget. First thing is Article 690.1. Every article has a scope. In other words, what's the scope of Article 690? And this is an important thing that we want to talk about. 690.1, the code says Article 690 applies to solar photovoltaic systems other than those covered by Article 691. And this is an important point. What is a solar voltaic system? Well, I'm going to put some graphics. We have this in our book. And let's just talk about a solar voltaic system. Is there a definition somewhere, guys, about a solar voltaic system? And where's that definition located? And Brian, can you go there and let's take a look at it and we'll pop it up in the, and we'll actually read it. We're going to call it a PV system. Oh, Article 690 was solar voltaic. Solar photovoltaic. Solar photovoltaic. Solar so photovoltaic. it's a lot of, lot of oh, con- solar photovoltaic. Yeah, see. Photovoltaic, okay. Uh, but so then, we're going to call it a PV system. That's so Article 100, easier. I'm not going to find it under S then. No, we had that acronym put all throughout the code book, yeah. PV. Because it's too hard to say, and most people say photovoltaic. <laughs> and that sounds like pro-photovoltaic. You'd be like... Yeah, it's no. not right. Okay, it's we're just not going to go. Right. That's not good. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go to the code, Brian, whenever you get a chance to pop up PV system. And let's see if there's a definition of a PV system. While he's doing that, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a PV system. One of the things I try to do on these graphics is to highlight in yellow everything that is considered part of the PV system. I'm going to try to use PV. And first thing we do is we're going to start with the power source. And that is that we're, we're generating energy, and, and this is not uh, a book talking about, well, how do you generate energy from cells, you know, semiconductors. We're not going to get into that. But just that the sun hits something, and it does something, and it causes electrons to move in a given direction. And if you get more of these things, and the more you put together, you'll see later on, well, then the, the more you're going to generate there. So we have a power source. And guys, help me. Is the word power source an important term in general? Just the term power source. When we get to 705, don't we have power sources? So we have to recognize that most electricians are dealing with just simply it's a load. Well, now we're dealing with power sources. And you might have what? Let's talk about in general concept. What are power sources? Wind, solar, Generator. batteries, generators, generators. generators, transformers, kind of. No, I'm just saying it's yeah. transformers, transform, it's yeah, transforming right. it rather right, right. than being the source itself. So yeah. later on, we get to 705. It's like, what happens if you start mixing power sources together? Well, if you put PV on a house and you have utility, well, we're now having two power sources and we're going to have to consider that. So 690 is only talking about solar voltaic and the other power source. The wind is 694. Uh, 706 mm-hmm. is energy storage systems. Right. Okay, so we get power sources. Let's stay on the PV power source. All right, here's the power source. Now, the wires that lead the power source are called source circuit. It's a source circuit. Follow that? Now, rather than a load circuit. You got to work with me here. This is really important. And just listen to it. This is an introduction. It's a source, and it's a source circuit rather than what... Bill? Rather than a load circuit. Rather than a load circuit. Okay, so it's, oh, there you go. It's a power circuit. Now, they have these boxes that they can put, these little electronic things. We'll talk about DC to DC converters. We're not going to talk about what they do, but in a brief, just short, Bill, what are, why do we have a DC to DC converter, the shortest, because we'll talk about it later on. What, what, does they, what do they do? We don't always have them. They just, they can be okay. in the circuit, and they would just, they're like an AC transformer that's the DC um, similar device as an AC transformer. It does something with the source circuit conductor energy coming in, and then it goes out. And there's some kind of electronic device here, right, mm-hmm. doing something that we'll talk about later on. Now, we don't have to have DC-DC converters, but if you do put a DC-DC converter, then the conductors that leave the converter Okay, these are DC to DC converter source circuits. These, th- so this is the source. Then you bring them together and you have a bunch of circuits you combine together. And then you're going to have a combiner. And we're going to show some pictures of combiner. So now you have 
three, four, five, or six number of circuits coming together, but I don't want to be running all these wires all the way back there. I can kind of put them in a box and then combine them together. And then instead of me running six circuits of two wires in back to the source, I mean, back to the inverter, I can put those six circuits into this combiner and then just run two conductors. But of course, the two conductors are going to be bigger because it's going to be the combination of the power sources added together. But it's a lot easier running a little bigger wire in a bigger pipe, but it's only two wires as opposed to having six circuits going back. So it's just a convenient way of getting it back over to the source. So that's going to be then a combiner. Well, then the conductors leaving the combiner are, it's the combiner output because the electrons are going the other way. They're not going to the power source. They're leaving the power source. Once a source, that's the output. So as you're kind of getting closer to the utility, this is the output. And now, so in a, and, and the combiners usually have disconnects. Is that a common thing, guys? The combiners have disconnects on? Okay, well, it's a disconnect and whatever. And then output circuit, that's going over now to an inverter. Now, the inverter, if you notice the symbol here, is converting DC, which is the symbol shown here, to the sine wave, which is AC. So it's an interactive inverter, which means that I have a disconnect because electrons are leaving the power source, going through the DC converters. Then they have source circuit conductors, combiner, combiner, output circuit conductors, going to a disconnect. Now I'm going to the inverter because I want to be able to disconnect power, the DC power that's coming into the inverter. So now we're having an equipment disconnect. This is the inverter DC disconnect. Okay, so we have to have a disconnect so you can then work on that inverter, turn off the power, work on that inverter. So now let's take a look at this graphic again. So now we have a, the inverter DC disconnect. Here's the inverter. And if you notice the arrows here, I know they're kind of hard to see on the screen here, but the arrow is going this way, single arrow right here. That means it's going that direction into DC. And we use pink to kind of show DC and use red lines to kind of represent DC. Now we're inverting it to alternate current and we're using blue to represent, this is the alternate current coming from that power source. In other words, there's two power sources. If you look at the utility, the wiring on the utility coming in here is going to be black. But the wiring coming from the inverter is going to be blue, which represents alternate current. This is an inverter. This is going to be an inverter output circuit. Oh, here it is. Here's the inverter DC input circuit. So the direct current coming into inverter is called the inverter DC input circuit. What's leaving the inverter is going to be the inverter AC output circuit. Now, this is, the terms are kind of intuitive. You just got to know that it's the DC input, the AC output, you know, inverter. So work with me here. Then I have a disconnect. Now, this disconnect is the inverter disconnect because if I have an inverter and I want to work on the inverter, but I have AC power coming in, well, I got to be able to turn off the DC power, DC, right, input, and I got to turn off the AC power, so I need an AC disc and a DC disc. And I, this is for the equipment, so I can service that equipment. Now, I have to terminate that equipment over to the distribution system. This is where I'm going to be interconnecting the two power sources. Notice that the power source I said for the DC inverted over is blue, so that's one power source circuit of blue, but the utility power sources in black. So now we're going to interconnect it. And I think, Bill, what I should do is I should point here and I should make a reference here that this is article 705. This point right here, this interconnection is 705. The everything in yellow is 690. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about yellow, but once I make this interconnection, Brian will make that note there. Well, then how do you connect that blue circuit with the black circuit, where blue representing the power source that's coming in, that's one power source with a black. Well, we have to go to 706 to make that interconnection. Five. 705, Turn I'm sorry, five. 705 interconnection. All right. Well, that takes care of, oh, Bill, uh, talk to me about interactive PV. What, what, is, what does that mean? It looks like in your picture that it's, uh, it's the interconnection of black and blue. So we're black and blue. <laughs> um, the black, the the black utility. and blue. The black from the utility and the blue from the solar is coming together. 
So uh, Article 705 is interconnected power sources. And so these power sources have to be able to play nice. And uh, so that whole process of playing nice, uh, usually, uh, as in most things, the bigger source or the bigger factor um, sets the rules. And the utility system is the bigger source. And so when we play nice, we, we have to get along with our you know, big brother. And uh, so the interconnection process, an interactive system, when it says it's interacting with the utility source, uh, it's actually running in parallel with the utility source. So the, the, the PV system is interacting with the utility system. And so the concern then is what? That the PV system, if the utility loses power, the PV system could then be backfeeding so talk about that interactive, right. in, in, that inverter. What does that right. mean? So it has, to op it has to be able to synchronize with the utility source. Okay, so that's an AC waveform. So it synchronizes with the AC source. And then it also has to sense whether or not that source is there. And so in a utility outage, the, the big concern from the utility side is, is to continue to energize their transformers, things like that, which creates a safety hazard for their line workers and the like and so this interactive system must interact with that system in a way that it does it safely um, it does it without damaging the utility system does it without damaging the equipment at the customer's facility and then when there is a power outage if it's going to continue to operate then it has to isolate from the utility system and no longer interact so it would actually move into a mode called island mode in the 2020 code where we would no longer interact, but we could still provide power to local sources. And we'll talk about that. I have a PV system in my house, and if I lose power, I don't have any power. That's right. I mean, my solar only works, and it's not even giving me any current, right? Well, it is supplying some of my loads, but if it supplies, if I need, if I have less load than my, than my PV system is supplying, well, then it's feeding the utility. It's going to be interacting. But once I lose power, I lose my... The PV is still there, and, and the electrons are just... They're not, yeah. they're not... And so people think that a solar PV system can be used as a backup. No. Uh, but you could, but we'd have to add batteries <coughs> and other ways to go about it. So yeah. what this means is this, and that is that it... The inverter is designed and it's listed under a standard to say, hey, listen, if the utility loses power, we don't want you backfeeding the utility. You automatically shut down. So the inverter will only work if the utility gives it power because the inverter needs utility power to sense it so that it can start working so they can start backfeeding. Brian? I just, you know, as we're looking at this graphic, I, I just want to mention for some people are going to be a lot more familiar with the different components on the graphic and some people are going to be less familiar those are just representative parts. And this is just diagrams. All of these diagrams are so that we can explain to you how things work together, not that this is the only way that things could be done. So as you're kind of looking at these things, don't think, oh my gosh, that's where the disconnect has to be. Has to be. I didn't do my job right. Or, hey, that's not what mine looks like because there's a lot of different scenarios and, and equipment's changed so much even just in the short time I've been, I'm, Bill's been in the industry way longer than I have, but just in the short period of time that I've been in the industry, the equipment has completely changed what it looks like. So it's all diagrammatic. Well, well look at this right here. We have a DC inverted DC disconnect. You can buy an inverter that has the DC disconnect incorporated within the inverter or the AC inverter disconnect. Well, you can have an inverter that has the AC and the DC disconnect incorporated with it. So now I don't have to have a separate disconnect for or the AC and the DC. Or the back-fed circuit breaker be, could be your AC disconnect. Or we don't even have to have this, this disconnect here because this back-fed circuit breaker, if it's within, it meets the requirements of equipment disconnect, because yep. that's the PV system disconnect. That's when the system ends. So it's a matter of, well, where did you locate this? How are we going to follow the code rules? But this is saying, hey, we need a DC, this, we need equipment disconnect. Like Just you so said, in our Brian. brain, we can say, okay, there needs to be a disconnect there. And we all know that a box with a handle on it's a disconnect. So at least in our brain, we can make that connection there. All right, yep. I'm done with this graphic. Anybody, comments? All right, let's go to another. Now, we're going to get a little bit more complicated, but Article 690, oh, one second, Bill, let's see. This is the yellowest 690, right? 
Yes. The utility is going to be general code. Is that right, Jimmy? Yep. Service. The black is all going to be whatever the code would be. And this interconnection right here of the power production sources is going to be 705. 705. Coming over here, this is fascinating what 2017 code did, was to clarify that the PV system ends at the PV system disconnect. So 690 only applies to this very small section if you're going to have a power source and you're going to go to a disconnect. And now you're going to be connecting, we're going to be DC coupling, that we have an energy storage system that has a disconnect, and maybe the energy storage system incorporates a disconnect within the equipment, but it still needs a disconnect. But that energy storage system is now connected to the DC. So let me watch the arrows here. Electrons are leaving the power source. They're coming this way. They're going down to the disconnect. They're going to charge a battery. But there might be times where the battery is going to be power is needed, so the electrons can go back the other direction. Well, they're not going to go up to the power source because it can only go one direction. It's now moving over here, and this is the point of DC coupling. So should this arrow bill be put right to this little point right here? I'm sorry. Is this the point of DC coupling right here? The actual point where the DC energy source is making a connection? Okay, yeah, let's th just say. Think of, it, think of it as a bus, a DC bus. Uh, so you're basically supplying power to a DC bus, and the inverter is operating off that DC bus. It has two sources. Uh, one is solar and one is energy storage. Okay, so I have electrons going in this direction, and you see the arrows? They're going this way, electrons coming in this way. So we could at times have the PV source having current going in that direction, and also the battery going in that direction, going through the inverter disconnect, going through a multi-mode inverter, which is different than an interactive inverter. Is a multi-mode inverter an interactive inverter? By, by its very definition, it, has to, it would include more than one mode. That's, and one mode is interactive, the other mode is standalone. standalone right. Is it standalone or is it island? Island mode is the mode that we're, yes, I think that's, that's I a I want to term. use one word. Which one do I use? That's a really good question. That's clear. Yeah. <laughs> it's yet to be determined. <laughs> so 2023, which maybe. Which yeah. one should we use for now in this class? So I can just not two I, different ones. It, it's, it's, we have a standalone article. So I think for now, you know, using the term standalone will All right, I'm going to use the work. word standalone. I think, I think the, people I think understand that. Yeah, the street guess. slang has been standalone for a long time. Because I don't know what an time. island mode is. Yeah. Yeah. But I know what a standalone is. Okay, so here we go. Island. So therefore, the multi-mode has interactive mode. That means you're interacting with the utility or it's going to be a standalone, standalone mode. Okay, I got that. I understand that. Now... See, solar comes in this direction. It's going over to the multi-mode inverter. Can you go to the big graphics so I can see it better? Yeah. So current lives here. It goes this direction. And it can also charge the battery. But it can also then the battery could charge here. And it goes this direction. It goes to multi-mode. Oh, if I'm connecting to the utility here, then it's going to go to the blue connecting over here, right? So therefore, I need that to be in the interactive mode. Ah, but this inverter can also supply standalone panel. And Brian, we need a main breaker on this panel here. The panel there needs to be a main breaker. With overcurrent protection. Why? Well, we have to have overcurrent protection. Why? All right. Panel boards have to have overcurrent panel protection. Panel boards have to have overcurrent That's protection. That's going to be 408.36. So panel boards have to have overcurrent protection. From a Here's current a limited source? Yep. Yeah, 408.36 doesn't get into... Doesn't get doesn't say right. where the power source is. Okay, so we'll put an overcurrent protection device in. If it's a 209 panel, then I have to have an overcurrent device not exceeding that. But maybe somebody could write something. Maybe 690 could say, "Hey, if the, you know, then you right. guys can you can because 690 can do what override what 408.36 is. You make a PV, PI. I'm not. Okay, so now electrons are going in one direction here to the standalone. This thing can supply both of these. I got it. If I use if I lose utility power. And if it's a, in the daytime, I'd have solar power supplying the multi-mode inverter in the standby mode, right? If it was nighttime, I could use my batteries. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you can use them both, even in the daytime, you know, one way. Here's my DC disc and my inverter disconnect DC side, my inverter disconnect AC side, my PV system. 
Okay, so now let's talk about code sections. So, Brian, we want to put energy storage. That's Article 705, right? Six. Six. How do I say that? Yeah. 706, yeah. energy storage system. That's an article. And, Brian, let's shade this, including this conductors right here, because that includes a disconnecting means. So that's Article 706. Oh, then we need to show the standalone. But we need to shade this right here, Brian. And this is going to be Article 710. Right. The DC loads. So I guess this is just code. Yes. This is just chapter two. Chapter. It's going to well, cover all those. chapters. You know, get yeah. the wire size breaker right. and everything else like that. Okay. And then this is utility, which is just code. Now services. And utility and, and distri distri service. distribution. And they're black. See the black sine waves versus the blue. Now. An interesting point I wanted to make here is I'm showing the ground at the utility, and I'm not going to get into grounding and bonding, but I want to go back to the, to the interactive one just to make a statement. All these metal parts and all these pieces are all going to be tied together. They're all going to be bonded together in accordance with chapters 1 through 4, specifically Article 250. And then there's a little bit something in 690 about some bonding and grounding. But, but basically, if you're running raceways or enclosures, you're going to be putting the half-inch EMT and putting a lockdown on there and tighten it down. And you're going to be running equipment grounding conductor. That's all just general requirements. So if you look at this graphic, all these metal parts are all connected together. And they're all connected together, connected to the distribution equipment. And everything is all connected together. All, everything is bonded and it is grounded. My point is this, there's nothing that you do to a PV system at all, zero. All parts are bonded together and that's it and then you're done. We'll get into that once you get into 690, that 45 and 43 and 47. So let's go over here, multi-mode, all metal parts, everything is all bonded together. That's all we have to do, mechanically install it per the code and that it's automatically grounded. There's nothing else to do. Let's go to this. Okay, an AC couple multi-mode. Okay, I know what multi-mode means. That means that what? I can work off interactive or I can work off of the standby mode. All right. Here's my power source. Oh, one second. This was 690. Energy storage was 706. Standalone was 710. Where does 705 come from here? Interactive point. And when you tie into the utility, 705 is going to be. So right here is 705, right? right? So we have to point this point right here. That's 705. That's that interact, uh, interactive. Interactive disconnect is going to be there. Right here. Okay, got that one. So now it's AC coupled. One second. DC coupled right here because I'm taking this source and I'm taking this source. I'm DC coupling it. All right, multi-mode, which means I'm going with interactive and standby. Okay. Energy comes this one. You see the arrow going one direction, going one direction. This is an interact. Oh, this is an interactive inver inverter. Okay, and then I'm going out of here, and I'm going to the PV system disconnect. That's Article 690. It ends right here, and this point right here is going to be Article 705. At this point, right? Yep. What do I have here? Okay, I got batteries. So I got an energy storage Article 706. The disconnect. Then I'm going to supply this. Oh, so the battery is going to supply a in multi-mode inverter, which means it works interactive and it works standby. Okay, so it goes here. So it can go this direct. Oh, oh, here's where it's going interactive, right? Which at this point right here is going to be 706 also, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Everybody agree with that? Right? 705. 705. I'm getting your numbers backwards. I have to stop and think. Okay, how about working mm -hmm. on that? Let's try that. Okay, seven. Okay, so I'm going to be connecting here at 705. Okay, got that. So this is going. Oh, so this is a standby. Brian, let's make sure this is going to be standby. And this is going to be article 710. So we'll put on there, and we need a main breaker in this also. Well, we're back feeding it, so that's fine. There's your breaker. Okay. So that's standby. I want to see something. Stand here. alone. Stand alone, not standby. Okay, stand alone. Brian, Stay out of 702. Right okay. Now. All right, so we're going to have. It could be a 702. So this is it going to be standalone be, AC panel. This would be a standalone AC panel. So this, 
Okay, so let me see if I understand why am I doing this. Okay, hold on. I got batteries. Oh, now I could use this as a backup power system. Right. Where, oh, the DC coupled could be used. Oh, I need batteries for, for, for backup power. Why don't you power. have that multi-mode inverter? Go, so. If I got this, what's the difference between can this I, one? Can I help you? Yeah, help me. <laughs> okay. Poor guy okay. sees me struggling. <laughs> holding his hand. Uh, yeah, so the I difference between these two is just saying how the PV system is coupled to the multimodal system. Okay? Okay, we can couple that system in a DC manner or we can couple it in an AC manner. In the AC coupled system, we have a DC coupled battery in that example, but our focus in 690 was on the AC, uh, was on the PV system. Okay, so we have a DC coupled PV system and an AC coupled PV system. A really important point to get across to electricians that they generally just do not get is that a multimodal inverter is operating in two dramatically different operating modes. Okay, the interactive mode is what we call a current mode. It just produces current. It, has, it does not actually run a single load in your house. So it's inaccurate to say that it's running something in my house. It's only producing current, and to the extent that the total current of your house is less than or equal to the PV system, okay, then it is essentially ru running as much energy as the house is consuming at a, at a given moment in time. But it is physically incapable of running those loads. It's not designed to run them directly. It has to run in what we call voltage mode. So when it, when it runs, when it goes to standalone mode, it has to turn itself, it actually changes operating mode from controlling current to controlling voltage. Now, and that's the way most generators work, is they control voltage. The generator that you buy, that you, you know, gasoline powered generator, all right, that's designed to control voltage to keep it within 240 volts, plus or minus 5%, or 120 volts, depending on what you bought. Okay. All right, and it's holding that voltage constant so that loads can pull the current they need from that voltage source, all right? Now it's really running loads. So when you go into standalone mode, you are actually running loads off of the system. In interactive mode, you're not running anything off the system. It's just an arithmetic uh, accounting of current flows. That's all it is. All right. well, what I see now looking at this graphic is if I'm taking the energy storage system and somehow I'm connecting it at this point right here, I'm connecting AC here with AC here. That is going to be AC coupled. Where in the previous one, I didn't go through an inverter to get here. I've made DC couple. So it's just a matter of it's AC couple, DC couple. If you look at this mic, you know, it's a source. That's a disconnect. That's an inner, inner inverter. You got a disconnect here. You're supplying here. You got these loads. If you come over here, it goes this way, goes that way. It can supply both ways. If you lose power, it's going to then uh, take the energy storage. It's going to kind of go over here, and it's going to go into voltage mode, and it's going to be supplying your standalone loads. Brian. Yeah, I, just to put this maybe in a little bit more of a, practical perspective of just what I've seen, and I'm sure Bill can give 10 more examples to this one, but um, this exact scenario, you're going to see where somebody's got an interactive system. They weren't maybe looking to be able to be standalone when they initially put in the system. They were just trying to take advantage of some rebates or whatever the case. After the fact, they go, you know, it'd be really nice. I have this huge array on my roof. It'd be really, really nice if when the power went out, I had power to use and they call up an installer and say, hey, what can we do so that I don't have to replace all of my equipment, and I want, but I want to add some storage? And then this is where you, know, you might get a multi-mode inverter installed and maybe even some more solar or whatever the case might be. But Well, my house, I'm in New Mexico, and I got an array. It's already there, and it's, it's mm -hmm. an interactive inverter. And I'm thinking, I, want to, I, want to, I, want to, I don't want to put a generator in case I lose power. Right, because that's I'm thinking of putting in a generator. So now I I would go to an AC coupled multi mode, and they said, "Well, Mike, you need another inverter." I'm like, "Why do I have another inverter? I already got an inverter there. Why do we need another inverter?" Well, Mike, you need another inverter because like I don't understand. So in my house, Bill, then I would put energy storage system. I would add 
a multi-mode inverter, right? And that's where I'd get my AC couple. Yep. So, and again, these are, as Brian stated, these are just simply examples. basic examples. Uh, so there's quite a few other systems out there on the market today and even more coming. And in 705, we're going to get into microgrid interconnect devices, and that changes everything. Okay. okay. And so um, the way you, we're looking at it here, it's helpful for conceptualizing, Got but it. don't get... Okay. All bent out of shape because there are other systems that are very common now that aren't set up exactly like this. But the concepts are still. You have yeah. in, in, interactive inverters, multi-mode inverters, you have energy storage systems, you have different articles, you have interconnecting of articles. So you, you need to be able to put this together. All right, let's go on the next one. Oh, standalone mode. Okay. okay. So standalone like, system. Standalone mode. Yeah. Okay, it's not a mode because this is now the article. It's Let's put an article here. How this baby works. Article, put a title here, Article 710. So, right, 710, so 690. Okay, so 690 ends at the disconnect, the PB system disconnect. Right. Did we ever get a definition of what a PB system is, Brian? Article. We did. When you get a chance, pop that up. I'm curious. All right, so now I have. Got it right up here for you. You have it there? The total. Oh, I don't see it there. Hmm? Your code? Uh, I yeah. guess when I, okay, you go ahead and read it too since right. I don't have that in The there. total components, circuits, and equipment up to and including the PV system disconnecting means that in combination convert solar energy into electric energy. Okay, so the PV system starts from the power source and it ends at the PV system disconnect. Right. Yep. And here's the way I explain it, right? And this is how I explained it to panel four when we were conceptualizing this stuff, is that when you're standing at the PV system disconnect and you look toward the solar panels, which is not the technical term, but we'll just say the solar panels, there's nothing but solar equipment between you and the solar panels, all right? There's no batteries, there's no loads, there's no nothing, okay? It's all part of the system, all right? The PV system disconnecting means is the demarcation point. And that's what was so important about what we did in 2017 is to make sure that we understood where the PV system started and ended because we're putting specific requirements, not the least of which would be things like rapid shutdown, which was a big deal, okay? And we need to know where those rules start and stop because people get, get very confused. These last four figures that you've just put up on the board in the 2014 code were all part of the PV system. Everything in that photo was everything. part of the PV so you system. So you had batteries in there and you had everything. And now... Let's Load look at, circuits, the whole nine yards. All right, let's look at it now. So now you're saying that right up to this disconnect, that's Article 690. That's right. Energy storage is, don't tell me, it's going to be 706. Good job. The standby is going to be 710. Yes. Where Previously, 690 kind of had all those things combined together, which is very difficult. Now we have different articles addressing the unique conditions of those articles. Right. Okay, let me follow. Okay, here's the PV system that ends there. So now we have energy storage connecting here. So the electrons can go both ways, right? They can go out this way. They can go in and out. Electrons go over here. Oh, do people have DC panels? Absolutely. What are you supplying? Well, you have DC loads, right? You could have DC loads. And what's, so, the voltage, what's the voltage of a standalone system, like these type of loads? For standalone systems, it could be anywhere from uh, 12 volts would probably be the most common okay, if you let's had go DC common. loads. Let's go. Because yeah. RV, the whole RV industry is built around 12 volts, and so there's a you lot get a of 12-volt components. components. All right. So that's about a 12-volt. Okay, got that. And then I got the disconnect. Well, then this is going to have to go to my, my power. AC. That's going to be AC. So that's going to be AC, and that's going to be... Now, is this 120, 240? It could be. It could be just 120. Okay. Could be. All right. Oh, one second. You know what I don't show here? Brian, I need you to show this panel grounded. We need to ground this panel. Because at every building, the building... This is going to, I don't know if even that's in the code, actually, to be honest with you. But I'm going to say this is a feeder coming to it so therefore I'm going to say it has to be grounded all right AC modules and I find this interesting that back over here let me go to a better example interactive 
we had these individual modules or PV systems, and they did all kinds of things to get over to the inverter, and that's where we got AC out, the blue right here. Where if you get a module, then they actually put an inverter possibly on each individual module. So now watch this. You get a solar panel, you have an AC module. I mean, you have an inverter, an interactive inverter, because I'm gonna be taking that solar and interacting it with utility. So now I'm taking whatever that voltage is, converting it to 120 volts. And now I have 120 volts coming out. And then I can plug these modules together and connect them in parallel so like, let's say, what's the amperage of an individual module? 10 amps. An individual single module is 10 amps? Yeah. yeah One roughly. module. Mm -hmm. 40 volts. 40 volts, 10 amps, something like that. No, I mean, I'm saying the, the, the 120 volt side. What would it be at 120 volts? When I connect, how many can I put together on a circuit? It tells you you can oh, have only the maximum, the one amp, one amp on the AC. Okay, so it's about, I meant to say, I'm sorry. It's about one amp on the AC. So if I have a module and I have an inverter and it's, let's say if, if it was one amp and I have a, a residential house of a 15 amp circuit, well then I run this cable from the manufacturer and I just kind of plug in the different ones and each one is converting the DC to one amp AC and I put in 12 of those on that circuit. And then if I have another circuit, I'd put 12 of those and I don't they have it where I can then make it a multi-wire branch circuit where I can put them together. So I just plug them in together and I just run this one cable here and I go put it on a two pole 15 amp breaker. That's correct. Right? Yep. So you can just simply get the AC modules and you can get the cables and you just plug these things in together, and you just removed a whole bunch of code rules to even wonder about because yeah. Article 690, the only part of 690 that would apply is going to be the, the inverter output circuit conductors. And of course, you follow the instructions and they tell you what size breakers. So for all practical purposes, you put AC modules, you just plug them in together. So these get all pl plug and play. Uh, I don't know if we have any pictures of AC I'm, modules I'm of plug and play. I'm about to pull one up right now, which would actually. Be, they look like regular modules. You, you don't even know unless you flipped it over. So, so I, don't think, uh, I don't think I can see your screen, Brian. I think oh. we don't have that set up there. All yeah. right, we'll have to set that okay. up to get yeah. that in there. So we're going to show that picture because we're going to be talking about definitions. You're physically not going to see any difference. We're, okay, so now let's see. I plug and play all these things. I connect it here. Now when I make this connection here. Where is here? I'm sorry. Good point. Love your face, though. If I connect the AC, this is going to be 120 volts because it's blue, right? It's the, the sine wave. Okay. I connect it here, and I connect it here. Don't say anything to me. I'm trying to figure my articles. So this is one power system. This is the other power system. I'm interconnecting them together. Then I have to go to interconnected power production system. That's article 705, right? I can't think, of, we have to talk about that. I can't think of any rules on 705. Anything special no. there that says on 705? Sure. Okay, we'll get to 705 we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with that. That's a lot easier. I noticed, uh, I guess in residential applications, that, that is this seem to be like a more, a more common application? It's, As opposed it, to it, It's not more common, it is a common. It's a common. All right, so people, any reason, well, we're not gonna hold up.